Hi everybody, it's Sally from Sally Stampers. Thank you for joining me today. Today I am bringing you my little tea concertina. Um, I saw something similar on Pinterest and thought how cute is that? Um, and I just thought that when I actually got the selection of tea bags inside, I just thought those colours work perfectly with the first frost, or sort of say frosted floral DSP. Um, and as I said, I just couldn't help but make it. I thought it was super cute. It's a very simple square box. Yes, I did mess my score lines up, can you see? But I wasn't redoing really it because this is quite fiddly. Um, so yeah, but I just thought, you know, if you just wanted to give someone a little gift, um, wishing you all the best, I just thought that was lovely. A nice little selection of tea to take away wherever they're going, whether it be on a little holiday or a trip, or maybe you want to send them to um, a friend who lives abroad or something and you want to send them a taste of Britain um, with these various flavoured teas. I think this is so cute. So I'm going to show you how to make it. So to start off with you're going to need a sheet of Whisper White. I've not used thick, I have only used the standard, um, but you will need a sheet of DSP that is ten and a half by two and three quarters inches in length which is 26 by seven. And on the long side, which is the only side that we score, we are scoring at three and a quarter, four and a half, seven and three quarters, and nine. And uh, in centimetres, that is eight, eleven, nineteen, and twenty-two. Very, very simple. Move that to one side. And then obviously, it's just a simple case of fold and burnish the score lines. And then obviously we need to be adding some DSP before we get too carried away, because I always forget. So again, I'm using whoops, the first frosted floral, beautiful pearl, pearlized paper. Um, and so you will need, if you've got directional paper, make sure you put it on the right way so in effect this is how it will close up so this is your lid so this is the front so my first piece of dsp is going on here so you're going to need a two pieces of this size dsp which is two and a half by three inches and that is six and a half by seven and a half centimeters so as i say just make sure you've got your direction that's the base, so the back is here. So we're gonna stick this one on this way. Do you know, I do so hate sticking DSP down because that side's so pretty as well, isn't it? And I'm hiding it, gluing it. It's such a shame, I do love it. So that's that bit done. So that's the front and the back. So the lid, again, is gonna be needing to go this way as well as the front part. So two very similar size you've got one that is slightly bigger the slightly bigger goes on the very front here and that is two and a half by one and a quarter inches which is six and a half by three and a half centimeters go across a little bit more and then the bit on the top is two and a half by one inch and that's six and a half by two and a half centimeters so that's that bit done, beautiful. And then while I've got this and it's easily accessible, I have my two Velcro dots. So I'm gonna take the back off one, make sure that they are level. Take the back off one and pop it on the inside of your lid. Give it a good press. And then put your edge here into this crease here so that you know you've got that proper shape. Use your finger and thumb to make sure it's in line and then just fold it down and then obviously where that velcro dot is you can give it a real good squeeze and make sure that adhesive is sticking. And then when we open it up there we have both parts stuck. So I'm going to pop that just to one side for a moment because we need to make our concertina sides. So I've already done one because, as I said, they are a bit time consuming and a bit fiddly. But you're going to need two pieces of two and a half by three and a quarter. 
Now, I did personally find this easier to do on my trimmer. Um, I don't know why, I just did. And we're going to score on the short side. I messed this up so many times, hence these score lines here. Can you see them? Because I messed them up so many... <laughs> there they are. Messed them up so many times. So, short side, we're going to score at every quarter of an inch. And we're literally... Now, I'm going to go that way first just because, again, it's easier. And we're literally scoring every quarter of an inch, which actually is half a centimetre. So it really is a small, small, small score. But that's what we need. Well, that doesn't look very good, does it? That's a really random score there. And we just keep going all the way until you can't score anymore. That's gone completely wrong, but hopefully it will be okay. So we've got lots of score lines. Hope you can see them. There we go. And then we're just simply going to do the whole concertina. So bend one in, one out. And you just work your way along. Because it is a small measurement, it can be a bit fiddly. And that's why I did this one beforehand, because I thought, crumbs, this is going to turn into an hour-long tutorial otherwise. And nobody wants that. Especially me, as the light's starting to very slowly fade as well. So, concertinaed all of those pieces. And then the last one is always the fiddliest. There we go. So, all that's concertinaed. I'm actually just going to hold it all together and give it a real good press that way. Flip it over and do the same that way. And you've got a real nice tight concertina then. So I'm going to do this bit in stages because again you do need to use wet, well I found you need to use wet glue because you have that very thin strip. So you need to have, if you like, it's a W and you need to make sure that you have this part on the inside because this is going to adhere just onto the side there. Okay, so if you did it that way you'd have a messy edge. I hope you understand that. So, I'm not very good at explaining things like that. So, as I said, I've literally just got some wet glue here that I'm just popping on. You don't particularly want too much either. And then, again, as you can see, I'm holding this at, at almost a 90 degree angle just so that I can get the top and the bottom in line. And then once I'm fairly happy with where it's sticking, I'm actually going to pinch. And the good thing with wet glue is that if it's moved slightly, you can slide it back in place. And obviously I'm using that fold, so that, as it is on here, that fold there to press it down. So that, that I've got a little bit of something going on there to hold it in place. And then I'm going to do exactly the same. And trust me, it gets a bit fiddlier as you go along. So this one now obviously needs to be adhered to the back, which again, you just kind of need to get in place. And again, this is why wet glue is ideal. Sorry, I'm doing this off camera, but it's quite hard to do with your arms a bit further outstretched. Right, happy that's in place. Let's give that a little press get that glue adhering and then you need to do exactly the same on the other side so a bit of adhesive on there and then fiddly fiddly get that on there and then pinch it into place and then the last bit to do on the back there and that just sits on that bit once you've got it in place and you're happy with it there we go to obviously just give it a pinch now I'm just going to leave that to one side whilst I do my stamping and leave that to to dry so I've got some whisper white and some Blackberry Bliss here 
and I'm going to use my first frost. I'm going to do the same sentiment because I do like that. So wishing you all the best and some blackberry bliss, which I've got dirty somehow. So let's turn it over because there's always two sides to every bit of cardstock, isn't there? So let's pop that away, move that, and then I'll just move that a second while I trim my sentiment down and again this the size of your sentiment will be completely dependent on you if you want to add a little bit of extra stamping to it um, I think I said in one of my previous tutorials that sometimes I think less is more and you don't necessarily need to keep stamping little flowers or little leaves everywhere I think sometimes just the sentiment is all you need so that's that bit done and as you know I'm a little bit naughty and I do simply stick this onto my card. I know that this is a straight edge so I just stick that on there and then I use my large scissors to just trim along there and as I said I'm fairly confident that my cutting is straight but clearly today it won't be. Let's just straighten that bit up there. There we go. So that's that bit done. And while I just let that, I'm trying to use as long as I can for that glue to set. So a couple of dimensionals on there. And I'm also going to add one of my lovely clear epoxy dots. Where's my piercing tool? There it is. Just one of the smaller ones, just in that corner there. So that's that bit done put those away and the only bit I have left to do now other than stick that on is I don't know if you noticed but inside this one either of my tea bags are separated by an insert just to add a little bit more um, sectional if you like for the tea bag so that they're not all in the same place that one's moved look naughty naughty um, and I think it just separates them nicely enough and doesn't make them sort of just all want to clump together. And so for the inserts that I've called them, you'll need four of them. And they are two and eleven sixteenths by three and three sixteenths. So they're just slightly smaller than the front of the box. And then I've just got my three quarter inch circle punch here. And I'm, I've got two of them here at the same time. And I'm simply just sort of eyeballing whoops, where the centre is, making myself confetti. And then with the other two that I have left over, I'm going to use the first one as a template so that I know that they're all in the right place. And so then when I put these four together, they are all the same cut. So they all separate. So, bring my little box back in. So, I'm now going to get confused and I've got my tea bags here. So I have one that goes right at the very front and then a insert and a tea bag and insert and a tea bag and guess what? Another insert another tea bag and then that doesn't seem right for some reason but I don't quite know why not and then right at the very back the insert and tuck him in my final tea bag and there is your tea bags and your inserts which you can now close and then you just need to pop this on the front There's a cute little sentiment. I don't know why that one's bulging, it shouldn't be. Give them a little squish. But there are my tea concertinas or tea bag concertinas. I do hope you like them. I hope you've enjoyed watching my tutorial and hopefully you will find a use for something similar to make and send for someone that you care about or someone you're thinking of. Hope you enjoyed it and hope to see you all again soon. Bye.